Mai Anō. The Black Power are supportive of talks with the mongrel mob, but say they're not willing to share their views with media at this time. There are over 5,000 gang members in New Zealand, and in part two of the story, we look at how the mongrel mob is making serious changes for its members. Peace talks and leading the changes are all part of the challenge. Well, one of the challenges has been is about people out there in public being ready for change. I mean, you know, like, um, people always look at this, ah, oh, it's smoke screen. What's really going on behind the scenes, you know? And, and, and I guess that's what people have to understand out there is that, you know, I don't micromanage people's lives. I don't really know what they really get up to, you know, every minute of the day. You know, what they do is what they do and how, and, you know, and how people survive is how they survive. All I can do is encourage them to do, you know, the right things. Kevin Pepperall is former police officer. He's also 8th Dan Kushin, one of the highest ranked in Aotearoa. Te rata wā i uruatua ki tētahi karapu karate, i roto i hamutana nei, kirikiri roa nei. Koe rā te... ko te tau 72. Ai. So mai taua wā tai noa mai ki tēnei wā, o kāre noa ki a ki aukati tērā. With my friends from the other organisation, they were aghast. They said, you want to teach these guys to fight? And um, I says, that's the most stupidest thing I've heard for a long time. They already know how to fight. It's not, they don't want to fight. They want the discipline, they want the, um, the achievement, the attainment. Yeah, it's, it's good, it's great for anybody. Absolutely, that's the bottom line. That's changing mindset. You've got to remember that society created these people, these gangs, not just the mob, but, you know, other gangs out there. They created them through ostracisation, disenfranchisement. I was 15 the first time I ever walked in the gate, being patched up for eight years now. And if it wasn't for the mob, you know, I don't know where I'd be right now, you know, probably be in jail. Yeah. Jesse is one of the 400 members of the kingdom, but it started with only seven. I think the answer to rehabilitate these people into mainstream society and is accept them, accept them as part of society. We created them. I suppose society you can't uncreate them. That all starts from healthy body, healthy body, healthy mind. Healthy mind, healthy emotions. Healthy mind, body and emotions leads to a healthy spirit. Uh, so it all starts in, on the mat over there. <laughs> to me, it all comes back to the system. If the system didn't put the barriers in place that they put in place, that are so limiting and so oppressing to the people, there wouldn't be any games. People would just be living how they want to with their whanau, with their hapu. So I'm not surprised about the attitudes of, uh, out there, but, you know, people have got to be open-minded about this. You know, that uh, here are young men and women in the, in the kingdom who desire change. You know, the old ways weren't working. And um, change will come, yeah. One of the changes is looking at improving the whanau's health and well-being of all its whanau. Hati Haura is one of those initiatives. We're labelled a gang, you know, but, um, you know, in terms of colonisation and all that, you know, um, we feel like we're, we're a whānau. All families want the best for their children, you know. You know, we're, we're a product of colonisation, you know, and at the end of the day, we're labelled a gang, but we look at ourselves as a family. But it's more than just health. We encourage kids to, um, you know, to go to school. We encourage all you young ones out there to go to school. Look towards higher education, go to university. You know, and if not university, then we encourage, um, you know, our young ones to look at um, apprenticeships, you know, and maybe hopefully um, employing themselves, you know, because there's a lot of discrimination that goes on with um, not only gangs, but the people of colour in general, you know. Thank you. You know, at the end of the day, we're not going to leave it in someone else's hands uh, to worry about our future. We're going to worry about our own future and we're going to get we're going to get the job done no matter what, because, you know, this is our family's um, lives on the line sort of thing, you know, so that's what it's all about, finally.
The Mongol mob kingdom is largely based in Aotearoa. It's a complicated structure, but this Ropu with its headquarters in Kirikiriroa has gone international, launching Mongol mob Canada today. Our brothers over there are indigenous peoples, uh, you know, uh, working with their people, and our struggles are their struggles. Um, and I became aware of that when myself and a few other of our brothers, you know, when they use the social media and they share their Fakairo and their journey, and, and then they see it, you know, and then they communicate to us and they share about their struggles and how it's synonymous with our own. Hey, and it's the same thing with our Canadian brothers, you know, they have a look at this and they say, hey, we thought we're the only ones that are going through all this stuff. And then we say, oh, okay, then this is something that we could probably uh, work with and, and, and put our, uh, you know, expertise into it. And that's what we're doing. And, 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 and it's spreading around. It's not just there in Canada, it's spreading all around the place. When you speak truth, it spreads like wildfire. Mana Waihine was initiated over three years ago. Educationalist Paula Ormsby is leading yet another change. Paito's vision for Mana Waihine was that he saw that there was no balance, you know, and there's been no balance in the gang for a long time. It's been male dominated. And so he's bringing us back to, to finding that balance. What happens is when the boys have had a tough life like that, you know, often they've got a warped sense around what a man is, uh, how a man acts, and they also have often a colonised view of women and our roles. And so mana wahine is about affirming traditionally what that was, how it fits into our society today. It's a whānau day out here in Kirikiriroa. No patches, just whakawhanaungatanga, enjoying company. They are the first to admit they have an ugly, destructive past. They are not all angels now, but change is here, and no society is far from accepting. But has the time come, and is anyone listening? When we're having progress at that, and, and, and it's not just with our own, but how we're seeing it influencing other organisations, taking a few leaflets, out of our pukapua and, and it's prospering, you know, and then yet we see uh, common folks over there, you know, not, you know, they haven't changed in their mindsets. They, they, they've told themselves, well, they, they can never be changed. You know, they got to open their own minds and saying, look, you, you're seeing it in your lifetime and it's no smoking screen. You know, you take away all these cameras, you take away the police, you take away social media, take away society, we'll be still doing this work regardless. Mm, okay, 